Hi everyone, Fiscal Talk it is. Welcome once again, uh, my name is Milica and we are continuing with the topic we finished last Fiscal Talk um, and that is e-receipts in France. Um, Fiscal Solutions Legal Consultant uh, Stefan Dietrich is with us again uh, and he will answer the rest of the questions we have for him. Uh, Stefan, hello, I hope you are doing well. Hello, Melita. I'm doing great. Uh, hopefully, you too. And I'm ready to dive into this topic even further. These um, e-receipts uh, aren't killing you, no? <laughs> Not right now, but, you know, they might. Okay, so there are actually a lot, a lot of things to consider. Um, yeah. So, um, definitely, e-receipts are becoming standard. Um, and as you are uh, actually doing the consultancy services uh, for huge companies, um, could you tell us um, the status or, and actually market situation? Um, are retailers getting uh, serious? Are they preparing? And, you know, stuff like that, please. Okay, Milice. Uh, this is um, a great topic to discuss. In the last episode, of course, we talked about the future of the receipts, the changes uh, that are upcoming from January 2023. Uh, in other words, the, the, there will be no more uh, printed receipts. So, as you said, uh, e-receipts will become a standard, something that's used a lot more than right now. Uh, so, in the light of that, uh, GDPR, of course, uh, is very important because when we are gathering email addresses and other data from our clients, we are actually gathering their personal data and uh, there are certain rules for handling personal data according to the GDPR. Uh, so pretty much everyone has heard of EU's GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation, um, and it was adopted in 2018, especially for the purpose to protect uh, personal data from, for uh, personal data of EU citizens. So it applies in all EU member states and it lay, lays out regulation how to handle data collection, data protection and the rights of, you know, individuals, data controllers and so on. So when retailers use e-receipts, um, they have to, I mean, one of the ways is sending e-receipts through email or through phone numbers. So they have to gather some personal data from their customers. Um, some people are happy about the change uh, because it's easier to organize. You don't have to, you know, keep all the paper receipts. They're all on your phone. They're easily accessible. Uh, plus, it's environmentally fr friendly. So a lot of people actually support this change. However, uh, not everyone is as enthusiastic. Uh, someone has, you know, a name that's hard to spell, has a weird email address. So it might be uh, really awkward, like in the moment you're at the cash register, you need to you know, write down your email or tell it to someone so it can slow down the process, uh, the sales process, for example. Uh, however, a much bigger reason for dissatisfaction is actually that uh, uncertainty how retailers will handle uh, that kind of data that they're gathering from their customers. So when we think about that, uh, you know, consumer protection is very strong in the EU. And with the GDPR, there are some things retailer, retailers need to take into account. Uh, yeah. Mo one of the most important things is if you're gathering email, an email address, if you're gathering um, a phone number of your customers or any other personal data, uh, in, order, in order to use that data for marketing purposes or to send uh, offers, unsolicited offers to your customers, you need explicit co consent. Uh, oh. And if you're sending an e-receipt and you want to send also marketing materials, they have to be sent separately and you need to get uh, consent for both of them separately. So it's not enough for the customer to say, yes, I want an e-receipt and for you to be able to send the marketing materials. Um, it's, a you have, it's a process and you have to get explicit consent uh, from your customers. Now we come to a different problem when you're shopping online and you just check the boxes like I agree, I agree, or I don't agree. Uh, it's easy to differentiate where you agree to the e-receipt and where you agree for marketing purposes, that your data can be used for marketing purposes. 
in the store, when you're actually there at the cash register, uh, it can be hard to prove that the consent was given. So what are you going to do? If you just ask your customers for uh, verbal confirmation, later they can say they never gave it. Like there is no evidence. So in order to actually send them uh, marketing materials, you'll probably have to have some sort of form that they have to fill out in paper or sign digitally in the store. So that can also slow down the process, make it more complicated, more cumbersome. So these are all the questions uh, that we'll have to answer once this uh, new regulation kicks in, the receipts are no longer printed, how exactly that will be handled in real life. Because GDPR has tightened up consent and it's very important to uh, differentiate, you know, I'm sending you an e-receipt, I'm sending you offers, uh, this consent can be ambiguous. So the retailer must have clear consent. They must keep the records um, because GDPR really lays down account accountability for misuse of personal data. So this is still very uh, unclear in practice. Uh, it won't be easy to do. There's a lot of implementing and changes that retailers have to do. Uh, maybe it will be easier just to keep the buyers anonymous to transmit uh, receipts through NFC or through, some, or through an app. Um, you know, we can see a big market change uh, when e-receipts become the standard and how they are handled uh, in the light of GDPR because there are uh, penalties for, you know, uh, if you are not compliant with GDPR and that can be, they can go really, really high because EU takes customer protection very seriously. Okay, great. Um, thank you. Um, so, I have one more question, uh, according to the, those uh, GDPR compliant uh, e receipts, but I wanted to ask, um, because like we heard all the process um, and how that uh, looks like for retailers. What do you actually think? Um, how complex is this um, everything for them to implement it? Mm -hmm. um, what is your impression of it? Well, it's a, uh, on the surface, it doesn't look that complex. Yeah. But when you, you know, start diving into it, uh, when you think about all the like GDPR, uh, you know, how are you actually going to transmit your receipts? What about returns? What about warranty? You know, there's a lot of aspects you need to think about. Uh, it's going to be an economic investment to change, uh, for example, the system you're using to implement NFC or to develop your own app for delivery of uh, e-receipts. So there's a lot of steps you need to go through and there's not a lot, a lot of time. Um, of course, uh, you can make it really simple and risk not being compliant or getting sued by your customers, or you can take all the necessary steps, which of course, you know, take a lot of preparation depending on your size of your business, on the frequency of your customers, how many transactions do you have per day? So it's not the same for everyone, you know, yeah. depending how many cash registers do you have? Uh, do you service uh, 10 customers an hour or 55, you know? Uh, so based on your business needs, on the type of your customers, are your customers in the younger demographic? Are they older? You know, not everyone knows how to use a smartphone and scan a QR code, you know? So there's a lot of steps, a lot of hoops to jump, jump through uh, in order to be prepared for something as simple as we are no, no longer printing receipts. So on the surface, it looks very simple, but you know, once you yeah. uh, scratch the surface, it gets a bit more complicated. Yeah, actually, I expected that answer, but I just wanted to, to you to confirm it. Um, so I have one more question for mm -hmm. you um and uh, that is um what about the right to be forgotten uh, how okay. is that affecting e-receipts uh, a great follow-up because one <laughs> one other thing you have to think about when collecting data from your customers is of course the right to be forgotten uh, it's of course uh, prescribed in G gdpr and that is the right of every individual to ask for data deletion so if I'm, I come to your store, I buy, you know, your products, 
I leave you my email address and then somewhere down the line, I want you to delete this email address and no longer contact me. And under GDPR, I have this right. It's called the right to be forgotten. Basically where you ask, you know, companies, private entities to delete all your personal data. And uh, under the GDPR, uh, if you um, submit a written or verbal request for data deletion, uh, the company has to uh, comply. So they have to respond to your, um, your request. Sometimes, you know, data deletion is not possible or it's not justified so they can refuse. But when it comes to personal data, more often than not, they will have to delete it. So for example, if you're a retailer, you're gathering uh, email addresses from your customers. Uh, if they request uh, deletion, you have to respond within 30 days from their request. So either verbally or in writing via email, when a customer asks you to delete their personal data, you have to respond to their request within 30 days. This means in practice, you'll have to uh, train your employees to respond to these kind of uh, requests. You'll have to store these requests in a certain way. You'll have to implement procedures uh, for data deletion. How will you do it? Who is responsible? How will you notify uh, your customer that their data has been deleted? And this is very important because uh, under GDPR, uh, financial penalties are pretty high. So if you fail to act on a data deletion request, um, the fine can be as much as 4% of company's turnover or 20 million euros, whichever is higher. So um, if you don't respond uh, to your customer's request or they think that their data was not deleted, uh, they can uh, start legal proceedings and you can be fined up to 20 million euros, which, you know, nobody wants that. So, yeah, I know. Uh, so you will have to implement certain procedures for data deletion also. Yes, um, not an easy thing to do at all. Not at um, all. At all. Um, so if anyone struggles with uh, e-receipts in France, we have an expert for you. <laughs> So feel free to, to contact us. Um, joke, uh, but definitely if uh, you want to maybe get some more information about it, uh, you can go and visit our physical portal because uh, Stefan and uh, his colleagues are working on it daily. Um, they're updating our documents, um, even the official fiscal laws that we have translated to English. Um, so definitely you should go and check it out. And you can find the link uh, for the fiscal portal in the bio, um, actually in the description of this um, video. Um, Stefan, thank you so much uh, for being here with us today and for your uh, time and, um, um, you know, for, for explaining everything to us. No problem. It is always great to be your guest in Fiscal Talks. And I would also like to invite our viewers to contact us. Let us know if you need any help, any new information. We are here uh, to help you to go through everything with you together. So uh, just let us know if you need help. You heard Stefan. Um, thanks everyone for watching and until next time. Bye. Thanks everyone. Bye.